All right, so you just finished watching the video on, on the lecture on descriptive statistics. How do you actually create those statistics now? So I'm gonna start by opening JASP and it has a couple of built-in data sets. So we're gonna use one of those right now. So click file and then examples. And we're gonna use this bugs data set right now, um, just as an example of how to create some statistics. And then later I'll give you a data set to import and to try on your own. All right, so this data set has um, repeated measures um, piece of data. So it's got people taking things a couple of different times. Um, and then we are looking at the gender and the region and the education. All right. And so I've got some categorical variables here. So you see how the little A is next to them. And then some continuous um, scale data here. So that'll allow me to show you both frequency tables and histograms in a useful way. So what you want to do is click descriptives and then descriptive statistics. And now we can kind of pick. So let's start with frequency tables. Frequency tables are really good for uh, categorical data. So let's pick gender and region here as our two in pieces of categorical data to make a frequency table with. And then all I have to do to get the table is just click display frequency tables. So when you click display frequency tables, it has to have, be a nominal ordinal variable, meaning it has to have the three little dots. Um, otherwise, it won't create this table for you. So if the table's not appearing, um, be sure that the variable is nominal. So you see here in our first descriptive box, it's told us that these values aren't available uh, because it's not gonna calculate the average gender for you. Now, frequency table is really useful. So it gives me the frequency, the raw frequency. So total number of people, the split between men and women. Here, a frequency of the area uh, or the region that they collected this data. That's not always the most helpful though because raw numbers, um, while useful, don't give me any context, so to speak. So these percentages are really helpful. So 70% of the data is female. Valid percent depends on missing data. Uh, cumulative percent just adds as it goes. So here we have um, our distribution of the region and it's heavily skewed or heavily northern um, areas. So I can really see that I don't have data from pretty much anywhere else. So those are frequency tables. Now let's create some histograms. So I can create a histogram of this categorical data but I'd, I would say they're not very useful numbers. So to create a histogram, I would click plots and then distribution plots. And there's no real reason to put these columns in these particular orders. Although they're, they're fine when it comes to histograms, but it's very tempting to say that this is a unimodal distribution. Um, and then in a sense it is, but I couldn't really calculate skew. So because north is in the middle, it looks like it's a normal distribution, but that's totally not the right thing to say on a categorical variable. So what I wanna do is just add two of these continuous variables. Pick any two you like. Pick these two. And um, I'm gonna look at the distributions of those. And so the, this is much more helpful. So it actually added a, um, a line for me here. And the line is just, I think, a roving average. Um, <clears throat> But what that does is it allows me to kind of look at the pumps of the data, if you will. So this is kind of a multimodal distribution. So it's got a couple of, of humps here. It's overall kind of unimodal, but I would say here that it has several distinct peaks. This one, clearly unimodal. So one large peak. Um, and the only reason I might say that these two are interesting is because they are closer to being the same height as our main peak here. Whereas down here, it's clearly one dominant peak with uh, less data. Okay. Um, so that's how I'm gonna calculate a histogram of continuous data. So frequency tables really more for categorical data, um, non-continuous data, histograms are better for continuous data because the, the numbers across the bottom make sense. They're in a particular order for because of the way that's the way the scale works. Now, if I wanted a mean and then some other information, uh, some of the descriptive statistics, I'm gonna scroll back to the top here. 
It's actually already calculated kind of a standard set for me if you're used to using SPSS. Um, this is the sort of standard, the default. So it tells me the number of data points, the number of valid, missing data points. Um, and here are my means for these two variables. So the second one's clearly higher. It automatically gives me standard deviation. Now even though they have different means, they have about the same spread around the mean. And then my min and my max. Um, what I want to do though is come down here to statistics and I can pick extra ones or turn them off. So if I didn't really want to see min and max because I don't care, I can turn those off. And I can add variance. So you can see that the variances here are the squared standard deviations. So seven points on a 10 point scale does not make a whole lot of sense, but two points or three points on a 10 point scale does. I can add standard error. So standard error says SE mean here. And so the standard error, and now these are adding in, um, in, the, in, a, in weird places, but they're in a particular order for a reason. Um, the standard error here is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So this is the variance, or I'm sorry, standard deviation if for our population. So how much spread I would expect in the population given this mean and this sample. Um, and they're in order of increasing size here. So standard error is the one that we think of as part of the population estimate. Right? So standard deviations for this sample only and then variance is the squared standard deviation. You can also add skew and kurtosis. So skew and kurtosis will tell you how different from normal things are. Now these are um, sort of like z-scores, which I know we haven't covered yet, but that's in the next video. And uh, zero would be perfectly normal. And anything kind of further away from zero, positive or negative, is not normal. Now if I come down here and I look at my picture, this one clearly has a negative skew. Right? Most of the data is at the top, the tail's over here on the negative end. This one's mostly kind of normal-ish, so let's see if that matches. So skew for the first one, pretty close to zero. Skew for the second one, almost negative one. So that's how I could tell that they're both, um, they're, di they're different things, clearly, visually and in the, the data set. Now kurtosis here is how different from normal. So this is negative, and I think negative kurtosis means it's a platycurky distribution, it's squished down. So this is a little flatter than normal. Um, Electocurtic distributions can have a positive kurtosis, so it's squished up. Um, at least that makes sense, right? And this one's a little taller than normal. I think you can see that by where the lines here um, kind of are. And so that is how we can get all of our descriptive statistics and our frequency tables and histograms out of JASP. Don't forget you can hit copy to copy everything or the little arrows to copy one little piece at a time to cut and paste into your homework or you can export the data into HTML format.